So I guess now on to actual, um, on to the actual sort of smooth modeling and topology things. Um, if you guys want to, um, if anyone wants to follow along, I'm probably going to break into the mushroom person edge flow file uh, shortly. Um, so you are welcome to pull that up and sort of fiddle with my strange, weird person that I've been playing with if you are so inclined. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so this is this is what the inside of the, the file should look like. Um, uh, but just like a little bit really quick um, about topology. Um, so like here's an example of, or like topology and Edflow. Um, so like here's an example for guitar of good topology and kind of gross topology. Um, and I, I know I mentioned like some of this stuff before, um, but just like, when you can, if you're modeling, try to keep your um, all of the polygons that you have, um, try to keep them as square and unbent as possible whenever possible. Um, I know it's, it's not like always possible or necessary. If you have to stretch something really crazy, it's better that it does it on a flat surface because it's not, it's not going to affect the smoothing. Um, but you can see here that like, um, for the, I mean, this, kind of peeves me actually because this is like full of endons up here and down here but for the most part kind of get the point hopefully um but you can see like if you wanted to add an edge loop in this it would pretty much just run straight down this line in some kind of logical fashion um if you wanted to add an edge loop up here like your tool might it would like add the edge loop in uh and then kind of break like you wouldn't really be sure where exactly your edge loops were going to be added on something like a model like this or a model like this um, and then the other good thing about this model is, for the most part, everything is quads, except for the few n-gons that are in there. Um, whereas this is just sort of like n-gons and tries and quads and nothing really makes sense or has any particular rhyme or reason to it. Um, so I think I'm just gonna actually show you guys some, some actual stuff. Um, where's my stupid UV editor? Um, all right, so I'm just, for this particular example, um, I'm just looking at the head. Um, this is actually a model I made. I made it as a high poly model and then I just like reduced the crap out of it. So it's not really designed to be smooth, particularly in like the torso because you can see there's just tries and stuff kind of thrown everywhere like a crazy person. So mostly just look at the head for this. Um, but you'll notice like on this head, um, for the most part, everything is like relatively unstretched out quads, like you can see sort of the cheeks here um, are still fairly square. Um, and there's nothing like really, really crazy happening in terms of like if I wanted to go in and add edge loops into this, um, it pretty much behaves like more or less like I would how bleh, like how I would expect edge loops to run on a model. Um, so like if I add something on the cheek, um, for the most part, it's not going to do anything really insane, like rip down, come around the bottom of a leg and like come back up and stop in the nose, which I've totally had happen before. Um, so this is like, I guess, kind of an example of more ideal uh, topology where, again, everything is kind of square. You, there's not, um, another thing you want to look out for if possible um, is the number of stars in your model. Um, and when I say stars, I just mean, or edge loop tool, um, something like in here on the eyebrow where you have um, one vertex and you have five or more edges coming out of it. Um, that's called a star. Um, and it's just like, they're, they're unavoidable in models, like especially organic models like this person. Um, you just have to sort of pick areas where they're not going to be getting a whole lot of deformation uh, to put them. So like when you talk, you know, your mouth moves a lot and there's like a lot of like smiling and stuff like that happening. You probably would want to avoid a star like right next to the mouth um, because it's going to be really hard to control how that uh, deforms uh, when it's smooth in particular. Um, so like here, I went in like a crazy person and destroyed the topology on this model. Um, and I just, I turned the cheeks into like giant stars so you could just, like kind of see an example of like how they don't necessarily smooth well. 
Um, so if you look at this as a low poly model, I mean, the cheeks are like a little bit pointy maybe in here. Um, but you'll notice like the, it doesn't look too bad, uh, more or less, kind of. Um, the second you smooth this though, you're gonna see like, uh, turn on stuff. Um, you can see like in here, there's a little bit of pulling. Um, there's like this weird sort of shadow on the cheek. Um, and then right here, you can see in the silhouette, there's like this really obnoxious lump in her cheek um, right here. Uh, and that's again, just because of how stars don't really smooth terribly nicely. Um, so if I like go back in here and look at this cheek, you can see, um, I mean, there's lumps because I haven't shaped this person's face terribly well, but like there's nothing terribly weird about like how the, the stars are causing the cheek to smooth. Um, so you'll notice like I do have a star here, um, but since it's in a relatively, it's a relatively flat area where that's happening, um, and it's only five, like one, two, three, four, five edges intersecting at that one point, um, stars behave significantly worse when you have like nine or 10 edge loops intersecting like you do here. Um, so that's, if you guys have ever like just made a cylinder like this and just smoothed it, um, um, you'll notice like the, all of the pulling and stuff here, um, if you can see that on the projector is pretty much caused because of the topology on the top of this model. Um, and all of these tries intersecting this one point, um, into this giant star of awfulness. Uh, when you smooth this without extra edge loops, it causes this like weird sort of ridgy effect. Um, if you were so inclined, you could go through and like delete every other edge loop and that would actually not eliminate, but it, it slightly reduces the number of like pulls you have. It's still lumpy though. This is like not, not super great uh, topology to work with. Um, does anyone have any questions about stars in models? All right. Um, and then the other thing is just like, it's a little bit, I guess, slightly less tangible. Um, and it really depends on what you're making and how you like to model. Um, but in general, so like if you look at these two, um, these two faces next to each other, um, you'll see, so like, again, if I go back in and I add a bunch of edge loops, um, blah, edge loops, edge, edge loops, um, I'll go, blah, go back and add some edge loops in on this person's face, so like, oh, okay, the eye needs a little bit more detail. So like, I'll just go back in, add edge loops here. And for the most part, it just draws them like straight back on the head and it's fine and kind of like logical in what it does. Um, this one here, because of the way the, um, because of the edge flow or like the way, how the, the edges are connected to each other, um, if I wanted to add loops on the top of this head, it's going to kind of do really weird stuff uh, in terms of where it's sending these loops. Um, so you'll notice like over here, it'll send it pretty much straight back on the head and then it like goes down the arm uh, to an extent, like having stuff go down the arm and things like that is like not super avoidable, um, which is why ideally you splice the head onto the model last. Um, Usually you do actually, a lot of times you'll model the head separately and then literally tack it onto the body when the body's done. It's a very strange thing. Um, but anywho, so like right here, the edge loop goes straight back. Um, if I go to the next poly over, um, you'll notice that it cuts right across the, the eyebrow here when I add a loop. Um, next poly over, it goes back across the head. Next poly does this really great thing here. And I say great with extreme sarcasm. Um, you'll notice, so like when I put this loop in, um, it turns here, runs around the outside of the eye, over the eyebrow, and then goes back over the head. Um, so stuff like, and this is like just makes, oh, and then it, oh, perfect, and then it terminates on the top of the head here. That's very strange edge loop. Um, so like ideally, you want to avoid stuff like that where if you add an edge loop in, it's going to basically doodle across your entire model without you having control over where it's putting these edge loops. Um, Cause I've totally had, and this happens a lot like after you add ears to a model, but like, you know, you'll add an edge loop somewhere and then it'll like wrap around the leg and then come back up over the head. And it's just like really ridiculous and hard to control. Um, so if there's a way to 
avoid this kind of like, you know, weird, weird edge layout where things just sort of attach together and there's like a bunch of stars everywhere. Um, if you can avoid that and keep your geometry relatively straight and square like this, um, it's significantly easier to predict where your edges are going to go when you actually add them in, um, which also just makes life easier for pretty much everything. But like this is like much more editable and just like easy to work with than something like this. Um, incidentally, if I smooth this model, it all right. It's actually like not. It's not the worst thing ever smooth, but it's like, um, if you look at these next to each other, I mean, apart from the fact that I just added a bunch of edge loops, like, you can see because of the, um, like, how all of these loops are terminated here, um, there's kind of a weird ridge on the brow line right here. Um, there's a little pull in the nose, whereas here it's just, like, nice and smooth. There's no weird nose pull. Um, stuff like that. Um, so does anyone, I mean, does anyone have any questions about that? All right, um, and the, it's, it's like kind of weird because there's so many different objects you can model. It's kind of weird to try to explain like how to keep nice edge flow all the time. Um, I find what, what usually works for me personally is starting from like a simple square or a cube um, and then just making extrudes. And if I, need, if I ever needed to do something where say like I go into this person here um, if I ever had to like extrude something here um, for some for some odd reason, um, like this, um, and then I if I needed to extrude again up here for s like I don't know she has like a weird checker pattern on her head. Um, sometimes and this is like kind of personal preference, but um, you'll notice so like if you go in here like look at this vert here, um, this is actually kind of making one giant weird star. Um, so if I smooth this, you'll notice that instead of like four edge loops, like uh, you know, like this vertex here has like one, two, three, four edges connecting to that vertex. Um, this one has six, uh, and because two of them are like sticking pretty straight up in the air, sometimes it kind of like makes smoothing a little bit weird. Um, so I know you could fix that again with like adding a few more edge loops in there. Um, but it's still just going to be overall a little bit harder to uh, control that. If I ever needed to go back in and add in like more geometry for some reason, like an edge loop in here, um, it would be really hard to do that. So one thing that I sometimes try to do if I can is to just not make, um, and this is again, like if you have to have a star, try to keep it to five edges. Um, so by extruding this extra piece, all right, what do I do? Um, all right, so like if I start here, extrude this weird face plane. Um, so you'll notice, again, this, this is a star. Um, so we have this vertex with one, two, three, four, five, five sides connecting to it. Um, and it doesn't smooth like terribly, kind of. Um, but if I did need to add that extra loop in there, one thing I might consider doing is just adding in um, a single extra like really tiny edge loop in here. Um, what this will do is it will actually help harden the side so there's less pulling on this first extrude that I did. Um, and then it will also go through and make it a little bit easier for me to kind of control how this works. If I obviously, if I needed these points to be like perfectly attached together, I might just need to suck it up and like attach them. Um, but right now, instead of having one, one star with six edges, I have two stars with five edges. Sometimes that can be preferable, um, and it would be easier. Like if I did, if I did need to come back in and uh, insert an edge loop wah, between these, um, I do have that nice little ring of quads where I could do that if I if I did need to. Um, and again, once you smooth it, um, you can still get these like relatively close to together, um, so it doesn't look completely unreasonable, but it still has like a nice sort of checkerboard effect if you for some reason felt the need to do this to a, to a human figure. It's a really weird, really weird demo object. Um, but does anyone, I mean, does anyone have any questions on that or like any, any questions about topology? Okay. I find it easier to answer specific questions just 
because it's like practical real world examples, but um, yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna have more or less, more or less what I have for edge flow unless people have questions. Um, mostly just the general guidelines are try to keep things relatively square if you can and where possible keep, make sure all of your vertices only have four edges connecting to them. Um, and then try to try to keep it so if you if you add an edge loop into your model, it runs in more or less a straight line, uh, and it doesn't wrap around your model super crazy. Um, those are the general principles that I go by. Um, super questionable with the face thing. Um, incidentally, if anyone is actually, I I textured the the entire eye in Maya, um, so like this is just. Um, Random, random aside on my texturing, but like this is literally just a ramp shader with a bunch of stuff mapped into it. Um, you can see I, I took my color channel, uh, I mapped in a, a a ramp shader for the sides, where I have like the back part being red, um, going to white, and then I have I have this like really crushed in like dark area of brown, um, sort of orange in the center and then darker brown on the outside. And actually, for some reason, I decided that into these ramp textures in the colors, I was going to map a noise texture in because I was feeling really spazzy when I did this. Um, but again, you can pretty much map, I, I've said this before, but you can map textures like really, really deep and just keep mapping into stuff. You can get some pretty crazy, crazy textures with my textures if you want to. Um, other fun thing with ramp shaders is adding noise to them. It'll make everything all crazy and blurry and weird if you're so inclined to do that. Um, this one gets weird because I do have like eight noise textures mapped in, but anywho. Um, all right, so yeah. Any, any questions about like the eye texture, adding textures with Maya? All right, cool. Um, in that case, um, I want to show you guys, just, uh, I'll go over smoothing again a little bit. Um, and I had a few, I guess, different options of like ways I could demo that. Um, so I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. But I, I figured I could do um, one of my other classes. I modeled a filament spool, um, which is just like the, which one has? Uh, I don't have this. Weird. Um, so I have, I have the screwdriver that I've been using for like perpetual demo. Um, and I also have like this weird filament spool thing um, that I store my 3D printing filament on. So I could like demo how to smooth objects like that. Um, or if you prefer, I could make some kind of new random model um, and demo things on. Do you guys have like a preference on what I demo stuff on? I could also use one of your models if any of you guys were like curious about how to smooth something that you made. Alrighty then. Um, in that case, I might just randomly grab, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like doing the filament spool, so I'll show you guys how to, how to smooth this filament spool. Um, and you can say I actually started a little bit um, in, the, uh, in the original file. Um, so I go back, so okay. So here's this original filament spool. Um, and I have, have I just already smoothed this? I have. Not so tired. Okay, here's the original unsmoothed filament model. Perfect. Yay. Um, all right, so here's like the low poly version of that model. Um, this was, I think, the demo I did for the section seven class. It should be up. I didn't get audio for this when I was making it, but you can see how I made it if you're interested in that. Um, but uh, you'll notice like this is a fairly low poly model. If I did want to use this for something like a animation project or a rendering or like the final for this class, something like that, um, I would need to smooth this with a three key. And you can see that it, these textures really don't hold up terribly well once I do that. Um, so I would need to just go in and add edge loops. And this is like actually a super annoying object to smooth. Um, um, while I'm here, actually, just a little bit about edge loops. So when I was making this, um, I 
I kind of went out of my way to, oh, I screwed it upside down. Um, I went out of my way to make sure that um, for the most part I have, like if I add an edge loop in here, it's gonna run ar just around the model. Something like here, it's gonna run around and do like a complete nice loop and not like cut through the rest of my model super crazy. Um, so here would be like another example of reasonable edge flow. Uh, there is a little bit of stretching over here, um, like these, especially, especially, especially this face in here um, is a little bit stretched and kind of weird. Um, same with these guys here, but like for the most part, everything is relatively square. Um, and again, when I add edge loops into this, um, it does it in a pretty logical way, which also makes your life way easier if you need to go back in and smooth the model like I'll be doing now. So. Um, basically, again, I think I said this before. Um, so if you want to smooth a model um, with the, actually, quick demo. Um, so hitting the three key is basically just kind of the same thing as subdividing your model um, by actually adding more polygons. So if I take this um, original mesh, I go to mesh smooth, um, it will add more geometry into my model um, you can see that this is significantly denser now uh, than the original model, um, and it'll basically kind of go through and like get it to be as smooth as possible um, by actually adding more geometry to the mesh as compared to hitting the three key, which isn't actually adding any more geometry. Um, it's just basically displaying your model in a smooth state. Um, unfortunately, a lot of game engines don't have this as an option which is kind of a bummer. So like if you did need something to be smooth looking in a game engine, you would have to go through and like actually add in the extra geometry in here. Um, subdividing like this is probably overly aggressive, but yeah. Um, so that is kind of the one nice thing I guess about doing um, smoothing is you don't need a lot of extra geometry to make it work. Um, and for the most part, I like working with models like this because it's a lot easier to edit stuff when your geometry isn't like super crazy, ridiculously dense. Um, but anyway, so I mentioned this before, um, but if you need to smooth an edge, um, you need three edge loops to make that work. You need your, so I'll start, I'll start here in this like little corner in here. Um, it's like if I don't, don't want this to be rounded, I need three edge loops to make this uh, appear like a hard edge. Um, so the first edge loop would be like this guy here, this original loop that is like part of, basically part of the low poly model. Um, where the edge loop is just defining exactly where that border is. Uh, and then I would need one edge loop on either side of that to fully harden or like fully control how hard that edge would be. So in this case, um, I will add an edge loop in here. Um, and again, you can see that that makes it, uh, that makes the edge a lot harder right in there. Um, and then if I go back in and I add another edge loop, mesh tools, insert edge loop. Okay, sometimes, sometimes for some reason for me, the insert edge loop gets hissy. If it doesn't work for you in smooth mode when you hit the three key, try going back to unsmooth mode and then sometimes it'll magically work. It doesn't really make sense to me, but whatever. Um, but anywho, so then we add this extra edge loop in here uh, and you can see that now the edge is even harder. Um, so if you, good Lord. All right, so if you look at this model, um, again, you'll see that to get that hard corner, we have three edge loops. The one highlighted is the original edge loop from the low poly model, and then I have a single, a single edge loop uh, on either side of that line. Um, if I, let's say I wanted this area in here, like this corner, to be a little bit uh, more rounded and less of a sharp corner, um, I will just add those edge loops farther away from the first loop. Um, so again, maybe I'll put this one halfway over, and you can see that it's still a little bit rounded. Um, it's not quite hard, but you do have more control over um, what the edge is actually doing um, just by adding in those extra loops as opposed to, you'll notice. So like, if you look at this edge loop compared to this, uh, this hole here, which hasn't had any kind of uh, hardening done to it, um, this is like super, super soft. You can't really control like how it's stretching or what this curve in here is doing. Um, whereas this one, I have a lot more control over that. Um, so like again, even, even just adding, sometimes I will also totally cheat and just sort of like share, like if these, these edge loops are relatively close together, 
sometimes I might just stick a single edge loop in the center of that and be like, okay, guys, share. Like this is, I don't want these to be really, really rounded or really, really hard corners. Maybe I do only need one edge loop between them and this is like kind of what it comes up with. Is this like relatively soft, uh, soft hole, but still with a little bit more definition to the edges than original. Um, so does anyone have any questions about how I did that so far? All right. Um, so like the, these holes in here are like the kind of the simplest part to do of this model. I'm not gonna do all of them unless you want me to, but it's pretty much doing the same thing like 12 times, so. Um, the, the most annoying part by far about this um, is going to be adding in the edge loops and not affecting the curvature of like these circular areas on the inside and outside of the model. Um, so you'll notice like if I smooth this, um, what should be just a perfect circle on the inside has these little hard edges in here. Uh, and that's just because I needed to add an extra geometry to get these ridges in the model. Um, stuff like this is irritatingly unavoidable. Um, and there's a few different ways that you could fix that. Um, so the first one, probably, probably the simplest solution by far, would be to um, just go in, like since this is just a perfect circle on the inside, I can literally just select that edge and use the circularized tool, which again is this square with a little orange basketball looking thing up here in your poly modeling tab. Um, so if I hit that, um, and I'll do that for the, the bottom as well, um, it pretty much takes care of any of the hard edges that I have in there. Um, sometimes, depending on your model, this isn't the greatest option, just because it will, uh, sometimes it'll distort pretty badly and like pull your polygons like really, really far across the model. Like um, if there were, if there were like fewer edges on this side of your model, it would stretch all of this geometry over here where it's denser over here and sometimes it does weird stuff. Um, so just make sure like if you, if you ever circularize something and you think it looks kind of strange um, in terms of like stretching your polygons, probably there's a better way to achieve what exactly you want to do. Um, so I'll go through really quick and just like show you uh, some stuff about hardening this edge uh, while I'm here. Uh, yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, so in that case, um, pretty much what you do is actually you'd want to you'd want to crush these edges together more. Um, so I'll just really I'm just going to grab since I already kind of have these edge loops in here. So I'll just grab these guys, and if I shift them closer, ah, uh, if I shift them closer over here, um, perhaps like this, and then added in another edge loop on the other side of this. Um, that will give you much squarer corners. Um, and then if you deleted like these extra edge loops in here, because if you look at this, um, this is like clearly gonna pull this and like bend it. Um, so if you just delete that, um, it'll make that sort of hexagonal shape for you. Um, but basically you would, need to, you would need to go through and just sort of like carefully lay out your geometry um, so that there are uh, three loops for each side of the hexagon that you want to add, and then try to get rid of the other loops um, that are causing the circle. Um, and again, it kind of depends on your model, like how exactly you end up doing that. Um, but that's the basic principle: is just like define define where you want the edges, and then either crush down the other edge loops so they just sort of fall on this curve. Like if I go in and I add this uh, edge loop in here now, like since this is already a straight line, it's not gonna affect that curvature. Um, but yeah, it's just like it's just like really a matter of shaping. Um, honestly, some of the most annoying objects to do are the ones where you do have like really circular stuff or like a lot of weird detail like this, and then you need it to be perfectly circular or something like that on the outside. Um, but yeah, did that, did that answer your question? Yeah. Sweet. Um, and I'll show you a few ways to go through and like sort of how to fudge and like terminate your geometry um, if you ever need to get clever about it. Because um, sometimes, um, like this is, 
a relatively simple model in the sense that everything follows like pretty, pretty logical lines, um, and like everything is like circular on the outside of the model, basically. Um, some things like, especially like weird futuristic suits of armor and stuff, you need to get really clever about how you terminate your geometry, um, or else it's going to be like a huge pain to actually model the stuff. Um, all right, so if I go back to this original model, um, I want to say smooth out uh, like all of these sort of gooey, like really, really soft edges in here because they're very much not supposed to be, uh, they're very much not supposed to be that soft. And of course I have, close the folder. Um, let me, I'll bring up the, the filament spool images really quick just so I can specifically reference stuff. Um, I think this is the one that I made. Um, but yeah, like you'll notice in here, like these are pretty much all really hard edges. Um, so I would try to replicate that when I'm actually smoothing this model. Um, and to do that, like so for in here, um, again, I have this original edge loop here. Um, I would just need one edge loop on this side. And then here's the bit where sometimes I fudge it. Um, I would need another edge loop so here's my, here's my original loop. Um, it goes along, kind of all along this, the seam in here. Um, because of how I originally created this model, um, you'll notice that I have this, um, okay, let me actually just show you. If I try to add an edge loop in here, um, it's going to run not quite where I need it to. Um, so I would need it to come all the way down here um, to, actually, or um, I would need it to come straight down here instead of veering off like this. Um, so that's probably something that I would have to draw in manually, um, which I'll do actually in a second because I'm gonna add some more geometry that'll make that a little bit easier. Um, so I'll, the next thing I wanna look at is like this, this edge right in here. Um, if I add an edge loop right in here, that'll harden that edge pretty aggressively. And now what I have is pretty much a straight shot between here and this extra little hardening edge loop here. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Here's a here's a fun example of uh, your geometry. Adding edge like when you add an edge loop in, it doesn't go where you expect it to go. In this case, it's coming straight up and then shooting aggressively across over here. When I would probably ideally want that to just go straight up the model. Um, but in this case, what I can do, so since I have this edge in here relatively hardened out the way I need it, um, I can actually just go in and grab these two edge loops here and do a, or I'm sorry, grab those two vertices and do a merge to center. Um, so now you'll notice that if I, if I needed to add an edge loop in here, um, wah, um, it more or less straight shoots straight up the top of my model. Um, I'm not editing the back of this model, which is why it's coming back around the side, but um, you'll notice that now it's like at least a nice row of quads um, in there. So now what I would do, um, since I have these weird extra edge loops in here that really don't need to be, um, I would just go in and delete those. Oh, it's gonna make me do the back too. That's terrible. <laughs> All right, where have I been adding loops? All right. So I must, I must come back in to the top of this and add in a few more loops. Um, Cause you'll notice like when I, so when I was trying to select the loops, it was not selecting any of the loops that I expected it to select. Um, and it was like wrapping the loop all the way around the model. That's cause I didn't basically do what I did on the front on the back of the model. Um, so I should be able to just come in now. If I double click that loop, I can just get rid of it. Um, and then if I, a lot of times I'll smooth my model cause it makes it really, really obvious like where geometry is close to each other. So like these two lines are really hard to select, but if I smooth it, um, they, it pulls them apart and just makes it easier to deal with, um, I think. So I'll grab these guys in here and just delete those, which is going to add n-gons into my scene. So I'm just gonna, fudge it and just merge those. Again, a try is better than an end gone any day. And this would be like a part of the model where it's both flat. Um, so if you have like a try or a star or an end gone, or 
no, end gons are always bad. If sorry, if you have like a try or a star, um, it's not going to be nearly as obvious on this flat surface as it would be like on the center of this curved kind of thing. So if you ever need to like fudge it with some kind of star, something like that, again, it's way better to do it on this flat surface. Um, anywho, but I should theoretically, oh, of course, because it wants me to do it up there as well. Yeah. This is very much an example of how smoothing is kind of irritating for objects. Um, so you'll notice, so I'm like, oh, why? I just want to delete this extra edge loop I added, but it's coming back all the way around. Um, and you'll notice, so here's the original edge that I have uh, that defines like the low poly start of this ridge on the unsmoothed model. Um, here's the edge loop on the inside and the edge loop that I added on the outside to make that a really nice hard edge. Um, you'll notice up here that I only have the one loop added on the inside because again of the way that this geometry is running. So I would need to go and just sort of insert another edge loop here and do pretty much the same thing I did on the bottom um, where I just come in and I add an extra edge loop. Um, I'll just grab all of these vertices and do a merge to center. And now what I should have is a single line of quads that runs all the way around my model. Um, if I smooth that, again, it looks reasonable in terms of smoothness. Um, so the other thing that you probably notice is like, oh, now there's like this really awkward point here in my model. Um, this is like another reason why, this is actually like kind of a, an annoying object to make in the sense that there's a lot of really hard lines or like hard corners and there's a lot of things that need to be smooth. So you need to go back in and just like delete that extra edge loop. Um, delete this extra loop in here um, just so that you can maintain that smoothed area in here. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, again, if you, if anyone has questions, just stop me. Um, so I've done, I've done like one corner of this. Um, I will do some of the other areas in this part as well. Um, so again, I need, I hardened all of that work just to harden this one stupid area in this little ridge here. Um, but I need to harden the top, which is significantly easier. I'll just add a loop here uh, and one loop on the other side. That's pretty much done. Uh, so do the top on this guy here as well. Um, and again, this is just adding one loop on either side of these ridges. Um, and that will basically smooth the model everywhere I need it to be smoothed. Um, so you'll notice that if I, uh, looking at this area in here, it's still not quite smooth. Um, or it's not, it's not quite hardened as much as I might like. Um, and that is, so like I'll come in and look at this. Um, so here's the original edge loop. And it's basically, it's just missing one edge loop on this other side. So I'd have to go in and just add that one more edge loop. Uh, and now it's a significantly harder edge in here. Um, ah, buttons, sorry. Um, and then the same thing here. So like this is um, still pretty rounded because there's stretching in here. Um, it just needs one more edge loop to define where that curve should basically stop. Um, and again, the closer, the closer you add it to the loop, the harder it will make your edge. Uh, if you added it further away, further away, um, it would keep that edge soft, um, but you don't get that really, really crazy stretching like you did before. So like right now you have, you know, pretty nice flow of quads going down. Everything's relatively square or rectangular. Um, there's no really ridiculous pulling in here. If I undo that, um, you'll notice, okay, yeah, there's an end on. Um, you'll notice like that this line comes in, it's like stretching really, really hard down here, it comes back up, it's stretching really hard here. Um, there's actually a star, which is why that's stretching. Um, so same thing with the, with the tin can that we looked at for crit. Um, if you ever get this kind of crazy like pulling in here, because um, if this were textured, it would add some really weird stuff to the texture as well, like really weird stretching. Um, you would just need to go in and like add one more extra loop and that pretty much fixes all of that really crazy pulling in there. Um, any questions on that? All right. Um, so I'll demo what I did here uh, one more time uh, to smooth the, or to harden this other edge of this area right here. Um, so 
I have, like, on this bottom part, I have my one, two, um, I'll actually go in and I'll, one, original edge, left edge, right edge. So this is nice and hard down here like we want it to be. Um, but then up here, it gets a little bit softer. And again, that's just because I don't, it's kind of actually hard to see. But um, I'm still just missing that edge loop uh, right on the inside of, or on the other side of this original edge. Um, so I would just add that loop in. And it's going to cut across pretty much my whole model really weird. Um, and then from doing the other edge, I also remember that I need one up here. And that should at least, at a minimum, that hardens that edge everywhere it needs to be hardened. Um, but it's also coming in and it's making a little bit of a hard edge, like right in here. Um, so I'm going to need to go back and get rid of some of those edge loops um, so that the inside curvature can remain the same. Uh, and again, to do that, I'm going to exit my insert edge loop tool. Uh, and I'll just grab all three of these little verts here. Uh, and I'll do a merge to center. Because my goal is to get, instead of, when I add an edge loop in here, instead of tearing all the way through like this on this angle and veering away from the edge, I want it to maintain its path along the edge. Um, by merging these vertices together, it basically makes these um, just a row of quads. Um, so that when I insert the edge loop tool, it's going to run along those quads instead of shooting off you know, back towards the center or like back towards the outside. Um, so again, I'm just gonna grab those and kind of merge them to center. Um, then I'll go back down and find the other area uh, where that was an issue. I'll grab these guys, merge them to center, and then go back and do the same thing on the back of the model. Um, let nobody tell you that this is not super tedious and weird of a thing to do. Um, I need one more edge loop in here because um, I, so when I add the edge loop on the front, um, these don't wrap around the back, they just, well, that's a bad example. Um, they just make a, a ring around the front, uh, so that was basically not added on the back. So if I want to do the same thing to the back, I just need to add in that extra edge loop, um, which I have done. Um, so again, I'll just grab these vertices here. Ah. Uh, you want just the three. Um, I will merge them to center and go in and do the same thing down here. Um, so now I should have theoretically like nice edge loops. If I wanted to, um, I could go back and delete like these extra loops in here. Um, Cause you can see that they're hardening the bottom of this edge pretty aggressively. So I'll just grab those guys and do uh, control delete. Um, and you should see, so on the front now, um, we have this nice line of quads here. Uh, and then the, again, the curvature of these little holes remains the same. Um, I would need to, again, um, you'll notice there's two lines here, so I'll just grab this guy um, and just delete that. Um, so, yeah. Any, any questions about how I did that? All right. Um, so this is, this is one of those things where if you know you're going to have to make this a smooth model, I could have built in geometry to do this when I was making the piece, um, but I wasn't thinking about smoothing it, so I didn't, and it cost me extra work in the end. Um, again, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, the more you model, the more you'll get a sense for how to build things in a way that will make it easier to come back and smooth your model or like UV your model um, later. Um, it's kind of one of those things you need to get a fi you, you just need to fiddle with and get a bit of a feel for it. Um, I know when I was when I was first learning to model, I know that like I did I did some stuff that was like really really stupid and I did things in really convoluted ways. But then if someone came back and like showed me a tool to do something, I might not have remembered it before. But because I did some really dumb roundabout thing on a previous model, I'm like, oh my god, this is great. This fixes like this problem that I had that was causing me so much grief. Um, so in a way, I almost think it's good to, to make mistakes because you remember stuff and you like learn stuff from doing that, I think. But it is tedious. Um, so anyone anyone have any questions about sort of how I, how I added these edge loops in here? Um, OK. Um, you will notice before I wander off of this section of spool, um, 
you will notice so like now if I wanted to add an edge loop, wow, this is really hard to actually click in here. Um, If I wanted to add a loop, um, you can see that I added one loop, and perhaps this is hard to see, but um, now instead of like coming across and going back down or whatever, it runs all the way around the model in one solid line. Um, instead of again, you know, zigzagging back into the center of your model. Um, so that's just sort of an example of, I guess, another example of like how edge flow can affect your work process. Um, where again, like if I if I made these quads originally, I could just loop the edges around and be done in like ten seconds. Um, but because because of the way the edge flow works, where I have like this guy, um, it'll make a little loop around this bottom part, and then this will make a loop around the edge. Um, it cost me a bunch of extra work to have to go back and like seam all those edges together, um, and just because of the way the the loops are running around my model. Um, all right, so the next thing, I'm just going to harden this edge in here really quick. Um, it's also like insanely, insanely tedious to go back and do this stuff. But um, all right, so you'll notice that after adding all of those edge loops in, my once nice circle is now less of a nice circle, and there's like this weird chunk in it again, um, like this weird sort of straight area. Um, so again, there's a few ways I could fix that. Um, the first way, which Probably, oh God. Probably less optimal at this point. Um, dang it! Sorry. Grab. I'll grab. The, I'll grab each of these edges and just like circularize them really quick. Um, and you can see that it's doing some rather questionable things to my model. Um, when I say rather questionable, I mean extremely questionable. Actually, okay. Hang on. Let me just delete these loops really quick and I'll see what exactly this does. All right, so this is an example of the circularized pool behaving kind of oddly. Uh, first of all, I don't know why it made my circle so much bigger, but it also twisted everything around really crazy. You can see, um, if I pan around, you can see the splickering here is because of overlapping geometry, where there's now just faces sitting directly on top of faces. Um, Maya's super not a fan of that. And you can see that no matter which way I rotate the model, or like which way I rotate the circle, I'm always, it always seems like I'm getting a little bit of flickering on the outside here. Um, so like if I, you know, I fix this side and like this side gets kind of broken. Um, so this isn't exactly the greatest solution for this uh, area at this point. Yeah, I'm really unsure why Maya is like curving this all crazy. Um, so in this case, probably what the better option would be um, instead of trying to use the circularize tool, I'm just going to um, terminate or get rid of some of these edge loops in a clever-ish fashion somewhere out of the way, so it's not going to affect the curvature, but I still have all of the loops that I need up here. Um, and in this case, um, there's an ideal spot in the model to do that. Um, so I have, like, since this area up here, like on the top of this uh, little center rim, is supposed to be flat. Um, I can more or less do whatever I want to the geometry there, and it's not going to completely destroy my model. Um, like, again, it's not curved, it's not really deforming, so, like, if I have a try or a star in there, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, so what I want to do, basically, what's causing these um, hard lines in the smooth version of this model is all of these extra edge loops I added. So right now, basically, you can see I have the original loop, and then one loop on each side, so it is making these like flat little points in the model. Um, if I wanted to get rid of that, I'm just gonna, I added that loop, I don't really know why, so I just got rid of that one. Um, but basically, I would ideally like these loops, um, these three loops to become one loop before getting to the inside of this model. Um, and the way that in this case I think makes sense to do that is to just um, throw an extra edge loop in here. Um, pretty much anywhere in your model. I'll do, I guess I'll do two to keep things maybe, it might be easier to, for you guys to see it. Um, so I'll just grab and I'll throw two extra loops in here. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is actually pretty much just merge these three vertices down here into one. Um, the same way I did on the upper part of the model, um, just for a slightly different purpose here. So I'll grab these guys, do a merge to center, 
And now if I take this edge loop and delete that, um, you can see that I'm left with, um, it's all quads. They're slightly awkward quads, but this is actually all quads in here. Um, so I have like quad, quad, quad. Um, and you can see that now like these three edge loops kind of come down into this point. Um, what I can do now, um, I actually, so I need to do this on the back of my model as well. <laughs> It's always the worst when you have the back of a model. Um, so in this case, I'll grab, um, I'll just grab these three edge loops here. Wait, which ones? These guys here. Um, and I'll merge these guys. And again, get rid of this loop. Uh, or sorry, get rid of that edge. Um, so now what I can do is grab these two extra edge loops here that are making this hard, um, hard part in the inside of the circle. And I'm just going to control delete those and you can see that the, the circle in this part goes back to pretty much being a circle again. Um, and I still have like the sort of um, hardened edges up here where I had in like these little, these little ridges in the, in the filament spool, um, but the inside is circular. Um, so this is like a lot of times, like if you're ever doing like the model of like a head or something like that, on the back of the head, you don't need a bunch of extra edge loops there because it's pretty much just like a round ball. So a lot of times people will go back in and um, use the same method to get rid of extra loops on the back of the head. Um, so they don't need to like go back and manually make them all circular because it's honestly really annoying to do that. Because um, again, like the more loops you add, like it kind of tends to make stuff, it'll like harden edges and you have to like manually round the stuff out. It's really, really annoying. Um, so I'll do that, um, I'll just do that again over here um, to sort of repeat the process. So again, I wanna go from three edges up here down to one edge here. So I just added two extra loops in. Um, I'll grab these bottom three verts, just merge them to center. And I'll do the same thing on the back here. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I'll just go and delete these loops in here. There's no. It's not gonna hurt anything if you leave them in there. I just like quads. I think they smooth better, so I just get rid of them. Um, and then I'll just uh, double click on both of these extra loops here and do a control delete. And you can see that now the inside of my circle is circular once more. Um, you will actually, I actually just noticed. So this does kind of a not terrible thing actually, where now, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. But um, if I, um, if I had an edge loop in here now, what it's gonna do is actually wrap directly around, let's see, okay. It's gonna wrap directly around this area here. So if I ever needed to like harden that more, I could pretty much just have direct access to adding curves around that, which again, is a positive or negative depending, I guess, on how you look at it. Um, so does anyone have any questions about how I sort of terminated those edge loops up here? All right, um, probably something similar would need to be done on the top of this model. Um, well, like first of all, I'm just gonna go in and I'll, uh, um, I'll just harden this edge really quick. So again, um, it was pulling kind of bad, so I added, um, here's my original loop. I added one loop on the top and one loop on the bottom. I'll harden this edge. Um, and also perhaps the start of that. Um, I find for some reason, and again, grain of salt, but um, for some reason the circularized pool seems to work a little bit better on, ooh, that was original center. Um, it seems to work slightly better on the outside of the models, just not in this particular instance. Um, and this is kind of one of those examples where I was talking about earlier, where um, since there was a lot more edge loops up here, I think I added like six extra edge loops on the side um, it's stretching them really, really far to try to compensate for this side, which has fewer edge loops, which is why they're all kind of arcing out from that um, one edge that I was just smoothing, if that makes sense. Um, so again, I probably would just do the same thing that I did on the bottom up here, um, which is just add, add these edge loops in here. Um, one thing I actually don't think I mentioned, but is kind of cool, um, if you, if you hold down shift while doing, while using the insert edge loop tool, um, so here is normally where it'll just like draw straight through your model. If I hold down shift while adding this loop, 
Um, you can see that it will kind of curve the model as it goes. Um, so this is like kind of a nice way if you maybe want to preserve this curvature a little bit more, you can just hold shift and it will um, kind of smooth your model a little bit and not make the, the edges harsh when you add it in. Um, I did, if any of you watched the stupid me modeling a tire for a chicken wheelchair this weekend, I used that to create the curvature on the inside of the model. Um, but anywho. Um, all right, yeah, so I just went in, um, grabbed these loops in here, um, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be bad and just be like, cool, I'm gonna merge all four of these together since I clearly added a random extra edge loop somewhere in here. Merge those. Um, and then I'm just gonna get rid of one of those faces, um, or like one of the edges on either side of that. So I'll have uh, one quad and one try in here. And again, it's on a flat surface, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Um, but then I could basically just go through if I wanted to um, and connect all of these edges together. Um, so I have been going through and just deleting all the edges. Um, Sometimes if I'm feeling weird, I go back and just manually merge all the vertices together and it kind of accomplishes the same thing. Um, and you can see again that the, the edge of this model is, it's not perfectly smooth, but it's way smoother than it was um, previously. More obviously, I actually hardened this edge loop. All right. Um, so again, you can see there's still like a little bit of a square area here, um, but it's significantly better than it was. What? have I done? All right. Perfect. Well, does anyone have any questions while I at least have this sort of smooth spool up before I restart Maya? All right. Um, all right, I mean, that was pretty much all I had to show you guys was smoothing. So is there any like specific questions that you guys have about smoothing things or like pr uh, particular models or shapes that you've had issues with in the past? All right. Um, gonna, uh, the lag is real. Um, so one thing I wanna show you guys, just like really, really quick, is like kind of a not totally awful way. If you guys are ever modeling mugs and stuff, um, you know, like a, like a coffee mug or something like that. Um, uh, semi not terrible way to do that, um, or to add like the stem of that mug on would be to, um, I'll show you that in a sec. This is, so this is the thing I was talking about before with, um, if you hit shift while using the, this, uh, insert edge loop tool. So here's like normal insert edge loop. It'll just keep the same sort of straight lines on the edge. Um, if I hold shift while inserting the loop, it'll bump the edge out really, really crazy. And in this case, I'm like, cool, maybe I don't hate this for like a teacup kind of shape thing. Um, so assuming that I had maybe, this is like the shape of the teacup that I perhaps like, um, I could add in an aggressively huge handle in here. Um, just by grabbing four of these faces, and I'll just extrude these in a little bit, use the circularize tool, and then I can um, extrude those faces out again, and I rotate them and be like, all right, cool, it's kind of a handle-shaped thing. You get the point. Um, and, ooh. All right, quick, what, what have I done to this model? Why does it look like there are, there's a single loop here and then when I smooth it, there's two loops and a hard ridge. Ah, huh? not quite. Um, I did, so what I did, and I actually, this is like one of the most common things that I used to do and that I've been like noticing a lot in assignments. Um, so if I grab this edge, I'm gonna extrude. And I'm just not gonna do anything with that. Um, so if you select the model, like it looks like one edge here, um, but then if you smooth it, you'll notice that there's like this extra geometry in here. Um, so it's actually just geometry sitting on top of each other. Um, and again, this is like one reason where like even if, even if the model isn't supposed to be smoothed, sometimes I smooth it because it'll help me find stuff like that, um, where it's like either edge loops that are really, really close to each other, 
um, like overlapping geometry, n-gons, um, definitely stuff like this where you, like you just hit extrude and then, I don't know, you're like undoing it and you didn't go quite far back enough or something like that. Like I do that all the time. Um, but if you ever see something like that where it looks, again, when you when the model is um, unsmoothed, it looks like a single line and then you smooth it and it's like an extra line in there. Um, you just go back in and delete that. It's probably just geometry setting on each other, probably from an accidental extrude. Um, I still do this all the time. Um, but yeah, so this is like a not terrible way to get, um, in my opinion, this is like not a bad way to get an edge or like a start of a handle into your cup. Um, and I just merged the entire model to center like a crazy person. Um, and if you did need to go back in and add more edge loops in here, like if this wasn't supposed to be such a soft curve, um, you could go back in and just add those loops in there. Um, now you will notice like there is a little bit like, ideally what I would do since the circularize tool flattened this, it flattened the circle, um, but the circle is still on a curved surface. Um, what probably is good to do is go back in and grab just like the verts on the, like usually I'll do like the top and bottom of this. Um, because that's where most of the issue kind of seems like it is. And I'll just pull those out a little bit. Um, maybe like push this guy back in um, and just sort of play with it until it's like not super insanely lumpy, if that makes sense. Um, but like honestly, handles on mugs are always a really annoying thing to do. But this is like how I've taken to doing them recently because I find it's pretty not bad in terms of um, avoiding like stretching and stuff that'll come with adding them. So I know. Um, one thing I guess uh, that I notice I notice a lot both when I was taking this class and still now is um, a lot of times like if you if you want to insert an edge loop say or add like a mug handle um, I'll do this one down here because it'll be easier um, so like, I'll grab this and I'll extrude this out um, but now if I need to if I need to harden the edge what I need to do now is basically insert like a bunch more edge loops into this that's going to affect the shape of the rest of my model. Um, so like as I add these loops, you can see the handle, the handle shape is getting harder, but the rest of my model is also getting like these really awkward lines through them. Um, so like again, not a terrible looking handle in terms of like the curvature here, but like all of these, uh, like the rest of my teapot now has these like really awkward hard lines running through it. Um, if you did ever want to want to work like this, uh, what you could do is basically just kind of do the same thing I did before, where again you just grab these three loops here um, and just merge them to center and do that for all of them. And then what you can do is just go back in and delete these extra edge loops that you added originally. I'm not entirely sure which is the actual one. I'd added there but um, and if you delete those and also these yay um, then you have similar geometry to what you have up here um, and there's not like a crazy amount of stretching and pulling um, the other thing so this is good practice which I totally didn't do down here um, Ideally, if you are going to have something that is supposed to be round, uh, like the you know handle of a mug, you should really start with at least six edge loops to define that. Like just extruding one quad out um, usually isn't going to give you a fantastic result for the end look of your model. Um, so like if you look at um, you can see here, like along, especially along the edges, um, even though this model is smooth with the three key, um, you can still see like a little bit of hard edges and stuff here. Um, that's just the computer frantically trying to basically take the average and like figure out what a nice smooth curve would look like. But since it's only working with four points, it doesn't quite have enough data to do that. Um, whereas if you look over here, I think there's like eight edge loops or something running around this. Um, and you get uh, a much nicer, smoother curve. Um, I'll actually go back in and just, yay. Um, and you get, well, I mean, that's a bad example because there's tries in it. Full patching time. Um, all right, 
or not, whatever. Um, eh, close enough. Um, all right, so anyway, does anyone have any questions about what I just did here? All right. Um, if you decided that you needed to loop back, like, if I was like, oh, cool, I have like half of an edge loop, how would I connect it back into the bottom of the cup? Um, I would probably just add in, I'm just going to pretend that the cup was always that shape. Um, I'm just going to grab like the same, same four faces that I started with um, for this nice looking handle bit up here. Um, and I'll do the same thing and I'll pretty much just remake the handle from the other side. So I'll grab these guys, extrude them, uh, scale those faces in slightly, um, and then I'm just going to circularize those. Uh, and again, I usually just use the hotkeys for the, or the little like icons in the poly modeling tab um, to access most of these tools. Uh, and then I'll grab these faces once more um, and just extrude them out and curve them and ideally you'd pay a little more attention to the shaping of this, but whatever, shrugs. Um, I'll delete these faces. Um, so now what I have is like two kind of handles and I'll just go in and really quick uh, just smooth the edges down here. Um, and again, ideally I'd fix the shape or like the curvature of how this attaches, but you get the point perhaps. It's, that's just like a matter of fiddling with geometry. Um, so then I have like part of this T-mug over here. Um, I'll just grab these edges and these edges and do a, what am I doing? Edit mesh bridge and then it should connect them together quite nicely. Um, that is a very curvy, awkward handle. Um, and if I wanted to, I could add in divisions to this and, you know, maybe, maybe like pull this edge loop a little bit out so it's shaped a little better. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the one thing that I actually just noticed the other day, which I'm really salty I didn't notice before, um, there's this bridge offset slider, um, which will actually change how your, it'll basically change which polygons the bridge is like bridging between, if that makes sense. So if you ever, if you ever bridge something and it decides to like spin your polygons really, really crazy and like really stupidly, um, fiddle with the bridge offset until you get something that looks nice. Like sometimes the bridge tool would literally just start with this as like your theoretically preferred model, but like clearly this is awful. If I smooth that, it looks kind of cool actually, but not what I'm looking for. Um, so I would just fiddle with that bridge offset until it did something that it was perhaps more what I was expecting. Um, so any, any questions on that? All right. Um, yay, coffee mug. Um, all right, so that's, why am I saving this? Um, all right, so that's pretty much